Coming very soon, next week, is the appearance day of Lord Ramachandra. It's going to be much more enlivening than a solar eclipse. On the way over, it looks like it's going to rain on Monday, so you won't see the solar eclipse anyways, if it's raining. There's so much to say, and I so the plan I have for this evening is just to do a basic introduction. Not that any of you need an introduction to Ramayana, but an introduction to the topic, because starting tomorrow at the Sunday program, we'll begin speaking about personalities, specific personalities within Ramayana, starting with Valmiki himself. So that the subtitle here is A Treatise of Surrender. And the reason for putting this is because like the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu particularly appreciate Srimad Bhagavatam, in the Sri Sampradaya, they particularly appreciate Ramayana. They particularly appreciate Valmiki Ramayana, although there's multiple, multiple, multiple. We'll be discussing that this evening. Ver versions of Ramayana. Here's one. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, so I understand some of you are newer, but we just recently observed the appearance day of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the, the biography of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Chaitanya Charitamrita. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, there was a period of time after Lord Chaitanya had accepted sannyas and at the request of his mother, went to Puri instead of Vrindavan. He traveled from Puri throughout the whole of South India for the purpose of, the ostensible purpose was finding his brother. He had an elder brother named Vishwarup. When he was younger, Vishwarup was always taken care of because he was the elder brother looking after the younger brother. But he had taken sannyas. So he was looking for his sannyas brother, Vishwarup. But the real purpose was to take the chanting of the Holy Name very widely, making it available to all the people of South India, and he was very effective doing that. So in the course of his travels, he came across a Brahmana who was a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And the Brahmana invited this young sannyasi, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to take his meal at his home. So when he reached his home, the Brahmana was sitting in meditation. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, my dear Brahmana, what is your intention? You invited me for lunch. And he replied, Lakshman has gone to the forest to gather the vegetables, the wild roots, and items that can be offered to Ramachandra. As soon as he comes back, I'll begin preparing lunch. It was a type of spontaneous devotion where in his meditation, Lakshman was gathering that was just going to be cooked. Now, it doesn't say that Lakshman came back. It just says after some time he began cooking, he completed that portion, his internal absorption in Lakshman, gathering the edibles for Ramachandra, and he cooked, and he made the offering, and he, he made the food, prasadam, offered to Lord Chaitanya, 
And then Lord Chaitanya waited and said, now you should take your meal. And the Brahmana said, how can I take my meal? Sita has been kidnapped. I'm going to fast until death. This is a very serious Brahmin. And Lord Chaitanya said, no, no, no. Sita hasn't been kidnapped. It was a false Sita that was kidnapped. The real Sita is safe. She's with Agni, the fire god. So please, stop your, your fasting, take your meal. Just on this young sannyasi, you say so, he accepted, he took his meal. Later, Lord Chaitanya made further travels in South India. He went to a temple where there was a copy of Korma Purana. And in the Korma Purana, it gives details. Not the same as found in Valmiki Ramayana, but in details. In, so the point is, the story of Ramachandra is found in different places and different sources besides Valmiki Ramayana. That's my point. He heard the Brahmanas in that temple narrating the story of the false Maya Sita being the one who Ravana kidnapped and then Maya Sita coming, going into the fire and the real Sita being carried out of the fire by Agni. Re re returned to Ramachandra. So he was very happy. He had a copy made and he came back, all the way back, he doubled back to where the Brahmana was and gave the Brahmana a copy of this Kurma Purana narration. So he knew it wasn't just his word. Kurma Purana says so. And the Brahmana was very much relieved. Confirmation, scriptural confirmation of what he had said. There's more of that narration, but I want to go back to what's on the screen here. The many versions of Ramayana, and amongst those versions of Ramayana, the gold, gold standard is Valmiki Ramayana. We'll be discussing this tomorrow at the temple. Mula Ramayana has a lot of verses, not more than Valmiki Ramayana. And Sri Vaishnavas, they particularly like, as we particularly like, Srimad Bhagavatam, they particularly like Ramayana. And amongst their commentators, they specifically, elaborately discuss the topic of surrender. There's, uh, many of you know, the key verse in the whole of Srimad Bhagavatam is 1866. You know the verse? Sarva dharmam parityaja mame kam shananam praja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha yashami masuchaha. According to the conclusion, instruction of Bhagavad Gita, surrender unto Krishna is the essence of the entire Bhagavad Gita. Sri Vaishnava Acharyas say, Ramayana is an exposition on that verse. It's a treatise on surrender. And there are many, many, many ways we'll see as we go forward this evening. It has many things, but the essence of those many things is surrender to Krishna. So one might ask, I've, I've asked myself, since we were followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and primarily Krishna Bhaktas, why should we spend our time on the Ramayana topic? Here's a nice verse from Canto 9, where the, the history of Lord Ramachandra is identified. Shukadev Goswami says, O oh, King Parikshit, Anyone who orally receives the narrations concerning the characteristics of Lord 
Ramachandra's pastimes will ultimately be freed from the disease of envy and thus be liberated from the bondage of road of activities. Pavastuti. That's pretty nice. No more envy, no more bondage to fruit of activities. And along with surrender, there's the standard of virtue that's taught again and again and again. Before coming here, I was in Dallas. And while in Dallas, one of the topics we talked about was Mariada Purushottama. I'm looking at our young man over here. You know the, the meaning of Purushottama? Purushottama. Purusha means man. Uttama means topmost. Purushottama means the topmost person. The name of Bhagavan. Purushottama is the topmost person. And Maryada means he's the emblem of virtue. He always abided by Dharma. He never did or said anything against Dharma. The perfection of Dharma, Maryada Purushottama. And that's Ramayana. It's the story of Ramachandra. And so it's the story of how to live your life by virtue. And in the culture where people read Ramayana and read Ramayana and read Ramayana and read Ramayana, something happens. It rubs off. It becomes a standard that we live by. Virtue. And don't deviate from the standard of virtue. And if we have some question, what's virtue and what's the deviation of virtue, we just read Ramayana that gives the indication. It's good to have teachers, and teachers can guide you. This is within the, the boundary of Dharma, and that's not. And here's the reference from Ramayana that help us understand. So having teachers is very valuable. And having a text like Ramayana is similarly. Here's another nice reference. Some of you are newer, I understand. So here's a book that was written by Rupa Goswami. Maybe some of you are really new and you don't know who is Rupa Goswami, but probably you know who is Lord Chaitanya. And one of the foremost of the followers of Lord Chaitanya was Rupa Goswami. And one of his books is, was entitled Lagu Bhagavatamrita. He called it Lagu Bhagavatamrita because his brother, Sanatana Goswami, wrote Brihat Bhagavatamrita. So he is, was a diminutive Lagu, light. Lagu Bhagavatamrita. And Lagu Bhagavatamrita, the principle of it is very simple. Who are the forms of the Lord, the avatars that appear in this world? It's one of the six questions asked in Canto 1, Chapter 1 of the Bhagavatam. And his whole book is on that topic. Avatars, that forms of Vishnu that appear in this world. So here's a reference that he makes from Padma Purana. The Lord, the Shringha, Ramachandra, excuse me, in Lord Nishingha, Ramachandra, and Krishna, the six transcendental opulences are perfect. That means the Bhagas of Bhagavan are there in fullness. Bhaga, Van, one who possesses Bhagas is Bhagavan. They're there in fullness in these three, Ram, Ram, Nishingha, and Krishna. And those opulences are all perfect and complete. They are the Paravastas, which means most important forms of the Lord. From Him, that's Krishna, they are manifested as lamps are lighted from an original lamp. That's Padma Purana, which is very similar to a very important verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, 
in that same chapter of Canto 1, Chapter 3. Ete Chanksa Kala Pung San Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam. I'm going to go over that again. Tvana Purana is stating that Krishna is like the original lamp from which other lamps are lit. The other lamps that are lit have the same lamp power, the same luminosity. They have the same bhagas as the original from which they've come. But one is the original. Krishna is the original, according to Padma Purana. Similarly, according to Srimad Bhagavatam, I'm pausing to make sure everyone's paying full attention. Srimad Bhagavatam begins with Sutta Goswami having just heard the entire Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Maharaj Prikshit, spoken to Maharaj Prikshit by Shukadeva Goswami. The sages of Naimisharan, you want to hear from him all that he has heard. Sutta Goswami is then given a special seat and they ask him many questions and it starts with six. And one of those six is, please describe the forms of the Lord as they appear in this world. Same question. Avatars. So in chapter three of Canto one, that was from chapter one, Chapter 3 of Canto 1 is the answer, and it starts with the Purusha avatars. Purusha avatars means the forms of Vishnu, Mahavishnu, Garbhadakshya Vishnu, Shirodakshya Vishnu, three Vishnus. And then from those Vishnu forms, expansions come, like Das avatar, the Leela avatar, the principal Leela avatars. They're listed, little description. And then some other guna avatars are mentioned. Shaktivesh avatars are mentioned. Other categories of avatars. Because they're forms of the Lord that appear in this world. In that list, listen carefully, in that list, Krishna is in the list. Krishna and Balaram. They're avatars of Vishnu. And then after that list, he, he Sukadev, Sutta Goswami, circles back and says, although Krishna is in that list, he is the source of Vishnu, so he is the source of all the avatars. The Sanskrit is important. There's like lots and lots and lots of commentary on the following. Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam. Swayam. Bhagavan Swayam. The original form, same as what's on the screen here in Padma Purana, the original lamp from which other lamps are lit, that's Krishna. So Krishna manifests. Krishna manifests the forms of Vishnu, and the forms of Vishnu manifest the avatars, but Krishna is the source of Vishnu and the avatars, although he's listed as one of the avatars, but he's the source of all of them. Is it clear? Not a contradiction. Like you can, you can, you have an original lamp, you can light other lamps and then you can go come back and write some more lamps from that original lamp and so forth and so on. So that's the position of Rama and Shringa in relation to Krishna. And then there's commentary on that particular verse. I think it's good without the light. It's good without the light. It's good without the light. Thank you. The commentary is by Balade Vidyabhusan. Some of you are newer, so I'm going to go over it. I'm, you don't, don't mind me. This is Education 101. Baladev Vidyabhusan, those of you that like Bhagavad Gita, 
you'll find in the beginning the Prabhupada dedicated his commentary on Bhagavad Gita to Balade Bijibhusan. He's a very important personality. He's a very prolific Acharya. He lived in Vrindavan. He studied under Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. He learned everything from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Baladev Vijibhusan is the one who wrote the commentary on Vedanta Sutra on the order of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur to do so. He's a very important Acharya. He, Baladev, also wrote a commentary on this Lago Bhagavatamrita, verse by verse. So here's his commentary. Lord Krishna is the best of the three, the Paravasta forms of the Lord. They have equal Bhagas, and Krishna is the most important, the best. Why? Why should this be surprising? His exalted nature of granting liberation to his enemies cannot be seen in any other form of the Lord. That is to say, when Krishna killed demons, their destination was the spiritual world. When Ramachandra killed demons, where did they go? Swarga. They were, they, by being killed by him, they were freed from sin. And you read in Ramayana, they attained Swarga. But those killed by Krishna, they attained by Kunta. He's the only of the avatars, when killing a demon, they achieved by Kunta. Like Shishapal, etc., etc., etc. Putana. Putana. What was Putana's destination? Putana's destination, the first, she came to poison Krishna when he was just a little baby. She achieved a place in the spiritual world assisting Yashoda in Goloka Vrindavan. Putana. She was bad. Really bad. She got the destination in Goloka. Anyway, that's Baladev's commentary. I don't expect you to follow this, but this is a nice little chart. This is showing the lineage of Sri Ram. The lineage of Sri Ram comes from Manu, Vivasvata Manu. And from Vivasvata Manu come Vivaswan. And from Vivaswan, comes his son, Ikshvaku, just from Bhagavad Gita, right? Chapter 4, the first verse, Krishna instructed the sun god, Vivaswan, Vivaswan instructed Manu, Manu instructed Ikshvaku. First verse of chapter 4. So then from Ikshvaku, Manu made an arrangement for Ayodhya, the capital of Ramachandra, to be built, and he sent Ikshvaku to preside here on earth. So the Sun Dynasty came to earth. The Sun Dynasty came to earth through Ikshvaku. And Ikshvaku became the king in Ayodhya, and he had descendants and descendants and descendants. So what this is a chart showing some of those descendants, Bhagirata, Dilip, etc., 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 down to the time in the lower left corner, Dasarath, and then the four sons of Dasarath, shown in this chart. So they're from the lineage coming from the sun god, Vivaswan. 
their Surya dynasty kings. Whose house is this? Is there some way that that ringing sound can be shut off? You know how to do it? The household lady knows how to do it. Huh? Yeah, just turn the ringer off. Okay. Are you ready? We're going to go to the next slide. This is all introduction. Things, many things you already know, but that's okay. There's a Pala Stuti of Ramayana. I mentioned a Pala Stuti that's from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Those who read the Srimad Bhagavatam become free from envy and are no longer caught in the bondage of fruitive work. That's from the Bhagavatam. Here's from Ramayana itself. A person who completely reads this narration of Raghunath attains the abode of Vishnu at the end of life. Of this there is no doubt. So just in case you wanted to go to the spiritual world at the end of this life, you know what to do. Completely read this narration of Raghunath. This narration means Valmiki Ramayana. So one of the documents that you are supposed to have received is a PDF that elaborates more on this Palastuti. The elaboration comes from Sri Vaishnava Acharyas. And they expand and expand and expand. The benefits of reading and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. One of the things I would like to come from t tonight and tomorrow is leading up to the appearance day of Lord Ramachandra next week, that many persons individually or little groups read together Srimad Bhagavatam, excuse me, read Ramayana to prepare yourselves for receiving Lord Ramachandra on his appearance day. If you don't, it's okay. But if you do, it'll be more and more and more meaningful. What to speak of the spiritual benefit that comes by reading lines from Ramayana. According to the teachings about Ramayana, there is an original Ramayana. The diagram of the painting here is showing Hayagriva giving the Mula Ramayana one billion verses to Brahma. That's a lot of verses. A hundred crore. One billion verses. He gave it to Brahma. Brahma gave it to Narada. In the early portion of Valmiki Ramayana, he specifically, Narada narrates 74 there must be really important ones out of the one, the one billion verses. And then he, Narada, gives some instructions to uh, the reader. And then Brahma gives a benediction to Valmiki. And that benediction that he gives to Valmiki comes after this incident with the cruncher bird. I will reveal to you the entire Mula Ramayana. So Valmiki didn't, he wrote 24,000, 24,000? 24,000 was the number? 24,000 verses in Valmiki Ramayana. But he knew the one billion because they were revealed to him by Lord Brahma. And within the Valmiki Ramayana, the incidents pertaining to sagacious Ram, together with Lakshman, Sita, Bharata, etc., and the Rakshasas, their deeds, thoughts, 
unknown or known to everybody and even not known to you will be revealed to you by my grace. So Brahma is giving this benediction to Valmiki. Even if you don't, you haven't seen it, you don't know it, you're going to know it. You're going to realize it. You'll, you'll have full grasp of the entire narration, one billion verses, Mulda Ramayana. And so, with instructions from Lord Brahma, he began composing 24,000 Sanskrit verses. Within the Balakanda of Valmiki Ramayana, Valmiki indicates two other titles that he intended Ramayana to be known as Sita Charita, sublime characteristics of Sita, or sublime pastimes of Sita, and Paulascha. Vadha, Vadha, killing of Ravana, a descendant of Palashchamuni. Here's a nice statement made by Madhvacharya. This comes from his commentary on the third verse of Brahma Sutra. The third verse of Brahma Sutra, Shastra Yonitvat. Some of you know these, these first three verses, celebrated verses. It Atato Brahmati Gyasa, Janmadyasha Yataha, that's number two. This is number three. Shastra Yonidvat. Sutra. What does that mean? So here's Madhvacharya's commentary. Part of it. Rig Yajur, Sama, Atarva, Veda, Mahabharata, Pancharatra, and, and the original Mula, Ramayana, and all Vedic literatures. Any literature following the conclusive, that's what falls under Shastra. Any literature following the conclusive statements of these Vedic literatures is also to be considered Vedic literature. That literature which does not conform the Vedic literature is simply misleading. And a very important person in Sri Vaishnavism, from what I've understood from Sri Vaishnavas and scholars of Ramayana, the most celebrated commentator of all the commentators is Govinda Raja. This is a nice painting of him. And here's some details, but he describes something that we also say about Srimad Bhagavatam, that the different parts, the different khandas of Valmiki Ramayana, they're um, the body of Lord Ramachandra. Want to hear? You want to read it? You want to, I'll read it. Balakanda, he calls it Mani Manjira in his commentary. That's the jeweled anklets for his lotus feet. The Ayodhya Kanda commentary, Pitambar, that's his dhoti, yellow cloth. Aranya Kanda commentary, Ratna. Mekalas is belt around his waist. Anyway, is indicating each of the khandas and the commentaries connected with the khandas. It's just a description. It's a full description of the form of Lord Ramachandra. Up to the very Uttara khanda, the Mani Mukut, the jeweled crown for his head. And we have a similar description that the 12 cantos of the Bhagavatam resemble or they represent the form of Krishna from his feet to his head. Now you should have received 
another document, a PDF, that has some list, a short list of different versions of Ramayana. As mentioned, you know, I'm new to all this. Compa compared to Srimad Bhagavatam, which I'm quite familiar with, and becoming more and more familiar with, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot in Srimad Bhagavatam in details, but the Ramayana was much newer to me. You know, le learning Bhagavad Gita and then learning Srimad Bhagavatam and Ramayana came much later. So I was very surprised to find out how many versions of Ramayana there are. So you should have received a PDF that has some of them. And I'm, I'll let you go over it because it'll take too much time to go over it. According to Padma Purana, there are 100 versions of Ramayana. That's authoritative. And there are variations within these different versions of Ramayana. And why are there variations? Because there are different days of Brahma. Kalpa Beda means days of Brahma. Different days of Brahma. So, Prabhupada explains it like this. There's a theme, and as the theme runs, the next day of Brahma, it's the same theme, but there's slight variations. And then the next day of Brahma, same theme, but there's slight variations. I'll give an example. S many know the whole story of Maricha taking the shape of a golden deer, moving before Sita, Sita becoming charmed by the golden deer, asking Ram, please capture the golden deer. When we go back to Ayodhya, which is very soon, then we can take the golden deer and be in, the deer can be in the park. Wouldn't it be so nice? Oh, Ram, please get the deer. Lakshman says, I don't trust it. Who's ever seen a deer like that before? Changes colors and moves like this. It's a rakshas, a trick. D don't fall for a yuck. So, oh, I want the deer. She just ignored him. I want the deer, I want the deer. So Ram went for the deer. And he said to Lakshman, you know the story. He said to Lakshman, don't leave Sita unprotected. And Maricha, when he was shot by Ram, called out in a voice that sounded like Ram's voice, Lakshman, Sita, help! Lakshman, did you hear that? Go help Ram. He said to stay here. I'm, stay I'm following the instruction of Ram. And, you know, so forth and so on and so forth and so on. So she started insulting him. We discussed this in Dallas. Sita made an offense by insulting Lakshman, one who's very, very, very dear to Lord Ramachandra. She insulted him so badly, and she threatened to kill her life, take her life, enter into fire if he didn't go at once. So what did he do? He went, but he... And not in Valmiki Ramayana, but everyone knows, he made a circle with his bow and said to Sita, don't step outside the circle, because if you do, you're at risk. But if you stay inside the circle, you're protected. And Ravana lured her outside the circle, and that's when he grabbed her. Correct? It's not in Valmiki Ramayana. Correct? It's not in Valmiki Ramayana. So when you read Valmiki Ramayana, you won't find it. But other versions of Ramayana is well known. So how did that happen? Different day of Brahma. You follow? It's okay, because there are different days of Brahma. There, there's details, variations on the theme. So you, later you can take a look at that PDF. And by the way, I added one more. 
the one more, someone from Houston sent me a little text. There's a, a section from Mahabharata, it's not in your PDF, where it's called Vyasa Ramayana. It's in the Vana Parva section of Mahabharata, where Yudhisthira is having a conversation with the great sage, saying, you're, you're, you're the most learned, wise sage of all. Could you explain to me how the, those of us that are pious and never committed some sin have had to suffer as we've had to suffer and had Draupadi kidnapped? And so he says, not only Draupadi kidnapped, but let's, let's see what happened to Lord Ramachandra. He starts to give a whole description of Ramayana. Vanaparva, the uh, Draupadi section. You can look it up later. 50 chapters called, some call Vyasa Ramayana. It's not everything, but it's some, some portions. There's a nice verse in Padyavali, uh, extracted from Gopal Tapani Upanishad. So Padyavali, you don't know what that is maybe. It's a compilation of verses by Rupa Goswami. He gave the book a title, Padyavali. One of the verses he, he refers to is from Gopal Tapani. Here's what it says. Yashoda narrated to Krishna. There was once a king named Ram. Yes. His wife was Sita. Yes. On the order of his father, Ram lived in the Panchavati forest. There, Ravana kidnapped Sita. As Lord Krishna heard his mother narrate this pastime, his own activities performed in ancient times, he suddenly called out, Lakshman, where is my bow? Where is my bow? Where is my bow? I pray that these alarmed words of Lord Krishna may protect you all. Padyavali. Here's the Gopal Tapadi Upanishad reference. One of the meanings of the Gopal Tapani Upanishad sloka, Yo Sao Saurya Tishtati, is given by Sanatana Goswami. That is, Lord Krishna is the same Supreme Personality of Godhead who formerly appeared in the Surya Vamsa. Surya Vamsa means the Sun Dynasty, as Lord Ram. So that's Sanatana Goswami's explanation of a verse from Gopal Tapani. This is a background so that we, when we are, we're preparing ourselves for Ram Nomi, we have like the big picture, then you can start going into details because if you don't know the big picture, it doesn't have the same sweetness and sense. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. There's two differences. Both Puranas and Itihasas are histories. But there's some differences between the category of a Purana and the category of an Itihasa. In the Itihasa of Ramayana, it has many, many poetic images. And there's another, and that is, Itihasas follow chronologically, and the Puranas don't follow chronologically. Clear? From, from you know, Balakanda, uh, Ayodhyakanda, so on and so forth and so on. It follows chronology. But the Puranas don't follow chronology. And generally speaking, the Itihasas are on one personality or family, and Puranas are all over the place. Many, 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 many forms of the Lord and features of the Uh-oh. 
This is your daughter. Your daughter. But how did you know where to get it? Oh. Okay, okay. Okay. This is a repeat of a message because Lord Ramachandra is Maryada Purushottam or is the emblem of virtue. Reading it helps us understand the value and the distinction between virtue and, and, and the opposite. And it, it inspires abiding by virtue. Vedic culture was maintained largely by reading Ramayana. People knew how to behave. And they were inspired to behave because of reading Ramayana. It's loved for that reason. Now, there's one other document that you should have received, and that's uh, teachings from the Sri Vaishnava Acharyas. This circles back to what you saw in the very first slide, Ramayana Treatise of Surrender. In details and details and details, you can go through that PDF. There's 18 cardinal lessons. I'm not going to give them to you but you can go through them um, to educate yourself. What are the lessons of surrender, 18 in number, that are built within Ramayana? They're told in different, different ways, in different pastimes, it's emphasized like this. And another pastime is emphasized like that. So there's, but there's like the skeletal structure of Ramayana is these 18. And then there's the flesh and the, arms and the rest of the body. Lord Ram is ready to give shelter. When he goes into the forest, in Dandak forest, the, the sages seek shelter of Lord Ramachandra. Now they're sages. They're not just, they're Bra more than brahmanas, they're sages amongst the brahmanas. And they take shelter of Lord Ramachandra, and they give their reasons. He says, wait a minute, you're, you're sages, why are you taking shelter? And the explanation given there is, he is the master, Swami, Tom, he has the capacity to give full shelter. And Vatsalyam, like a parent, he's affectionate, like the king is affectionate. And so Shilyam, he has all Sushila, he has all good quality and good character, good conduct. Everything is superlative about him. He's gentle, he's powerful, he has all knowledge. So Parayam, he is very easily approached. We discussed this just this afternoon in Dallas, how he was approached by various members of his kingdom for shelter. Anyway, Ganam, he has all knowledge and he has all ability to accomplish anything. And as he gave shelter, this is the treatise of surrender message being expanded in yet another way. And here's Vibhishan. Vibhishan was Ravana's younger brother. And he was the opposite. Vibhishan's and Ravana's mother was Kaikashi. Kaikashi was the daughter of Suketu, and Suketu was a Rakshasa. Suketu did quick math, two plus two equals four. There's a very amazing grandson of Brahma named Vishrava, and he's present on the planet, and if our daughter, my daughter, 
Kaikashi becomes his wife, then he'll produce very powerful rakshasis because by Vedic culture, the mother, the, the, the offspring take on the quality and character and at least the varna of the mother. So she's a rakshasa. So she approached Vishrava. You know the story? She approached Vishrava while he was doing a yagya. And in Vedic culture, when a Brahmin is doing a yagya, you don't stop no matter what. You continue to its completion. So she just quietly stood there, scratched the ground with her foot, said nothing, very quiet. And when he, he was done, he turned to her, to her. He said, I know who you are. I know your purpose in coming. But you came at an inauspicious time. I was in the midst of a yagya. And so the answer to your request is, yes, I'll, be, you, I'll accept you as a wife. But because you came at the inauspicious time, your children are going to be terrible demons. And she said, no, no, no. He said, all right, the fourth child, the youngest son, will be exalted, a saintly person. Name him Vibhishana. So, Shirpanaka was the daughter, Ravana and Kumbhakarna were the sons, and Vibhishana was the son number four. And Vibhishana, being obedient to the culture of the time, he didn't just abandon Ravana, he tried to correct Ravana. It was, didn't work. Ravana was incorrigible. And especially when Ravana kidnapped Sita, he appealed three times. Once publicly, once privately, then again, pub again publicly. And when a third time, Ravana insulted him and said, if you weren't my brother, I'd kill you at once. Get out of here. So with that, Vibhishan left. And not only he left, with him came four ministers. So it's a very important section of Ramayana where Vibhishan's taking shelter. There's, the detail is very important. It's... Someone who's been in bad association wants to take shelter of the Supreme Person. And he didn't go directly to Ram. He was received by Sugriva. So he requested Sugriva, can you carry a message to Ram? I'd like to take his shelter. And Sugriva was like, no way. Just look at this guy. Da, 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 da. He's got intentions. He knows that you're going to be victorious. He wants the kingdom of Ravana. He, he, you know, he's... Don't, don't accept him. You know, he, he had his point of view. It was, it was, his interest was Ram's interest, but he, he got the, the, the wrong understanding. And then different, different, different... Ram asked his ministers, advisors, what do you think, what do you think? Finally, he asked Hanuman, what do you think? He said, I know what you're going to do. You give shelter to anyone if they sincerely want to take your shelter. It's already done, so you, you can say what you like. I know that you'll accept him. And then Ram said, yes. Even if Ravana came at this time and took shelter after all that he has done, I'd accept him. Of course, he didn't come. Then there's some very important verses are there in that statement by Lord Ramachandra, who he will accept, even once. You know the verse. If sincerely taking my shelter from that day forward, forever he'll be protected by me. Celebrated verse. Celebrated verse in Ramayana. It's all about the treatise of surrender. And commentators... I'm going to end quickly. The commentators say the four ministers you see from this nice painting, there's Ram, there's Lakshman next to him, there's Hanuman, and behind Hanuman is Sugriva with the crown. 
And Sugriva saying no, no, and Hanuman saying, I know you're going to accept him. So the, the four ministers, the Sri Vaishnava Acharya's comment, there's the person who wants to take shelter. The four ministers are representing these four features of taking shelter. It's worthy, it's noteworthy. I've spoken on this hundreds of, well, at least 20 times. Akinchana Dvam. Akinchana Tvam. The characteristic of I possess nothing, Akinchana. There is no other shelter for me. There's only one shelter, Akinchana Tvam. And since I have nowhere else to go for shelter, I repose my entire shelter on Lord Ramachandra, the Sharana, Sharanya, the person giving me shelter. Ananya, Gati, Tvam. It's like backwards and forwards, checkmate. I have only one shelter, I have no other shelter. That's the characteristic of the person who is giving, who is seeking shelter. That's Vibhishan. And in this case, the person who is giving the shelter, that's the Sharanya. And this is Ramachandra's qualities. Saralata, he gives shelter to anyone without any consideration of who they are. Or Saralata means simplicity. Saralata means simplicity. You'll find that word Saralata in different places in the scriptures. It's a characteristic of a person in goodness. They're, they're by nature, they're simple. They're not complex and complicated and all over the place. So that's Ramachandra. Someone who takes shelter, he's ready. And Shakti, he has the power to give protection and deliver them. So that's the, this is the last slide. This is the combination of the treatise of surrender presentation. Uh, so for when, as we go forward, leading up to Lord Ramachandra's appearance, and as you're reading, hopefully, your, the, your favorite version of Ramayana, whatever that is, little by little, little by little, little by little, you'll have some sense of how this is all helping us, the readers, to take the position of surrender to Lord Ramachandra and, of course, his exalted devotees. Take your favorite, Lakshman, Sita, Bharata, Shatrugna. We spent time just this afternoon about Shatrugna. He's special. Lakshman gets lots of attention. Shatrugna doesn't get the same amount of attention. But his character is very special. Well, I won't repeat what we did this afternoon. But as you, as you go forward, it inspires the mood of virtue and inspires the mood of shelter taking under the emblem of virtue, Lord Ramachandra, the Mariyada Purushottama. And you're, you're safe with him. Just be with him and with those who are with him. And you're, you're, you're in a good place. Live your life accordingly. We have modern life. Look at this house with all the, you know, modern facilities, etc., etc. That's fine. Not like, don't do those things. But when, with those things, don't lose track of the simplicity of heart. The shelter taking, the, empty, the way of life of virtue, and live virtuously and pass it on to your children. Set a good example yourselves and pass it on to your children. Okay. So that's introduction. Now tomorrow at the Sunday feast, I'm just going to do a little bit more on the introduction and that we're going to spend time with Valmiki. The original compiler of Valmiki Ramayana. So let's see if there's some discussion. You've been a very patient audience. I congratulate you.
Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the class. So my question is, as you know, when we uh, did Radha Ashtami, we talked about how merciful Radharani is. We know how merciful Lord Krishna is. And today we are hearing about how easy it is to approach Lord Ram. So when we are chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, are we seeking shelter of Radharani, Krishna and Lord Ram? Why not? Now, the Supreme Lord knows our heart and his nature is he according to our heart he'll respond so it depends on your heart not you know what does this word mean this or does that this word mean that it depends on your heart and you know it's good to know the meanings of the words certainly but the reciprocation is primarily from the, the place of heart from where you're calling The Lord reveals himself accordingly and reciprocates accordingly and gives mercy and protection accordingly. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. So, um, does Valmiki also appear in each kalpa and he records the incidents as they happen with differences or? I couldn't follow. Does Valmiki also appear in each kalpa as himself or? Because Valmiki Ramayana sometimes is different from other Ramayanas. So. Do you want to know which is the right one? Is that what you're asking? I mean, does he also appear in each kalpa whenever Lord Ramachandra appears? Who? Uh, Valmiki. No. Not necessarily. Tomorrow, we're going to be discussing, according to different Ramayanas, who was Valmiki. So he's not only, you know, with, with, uh, we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. He's not only... This, he's, you know, the, 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 one of the sons of Varuna, but there's other things and other things and other things. So he, he, certainly he's intimately connected with Valmiki Ramayana. And in, in Valmiki Ramayana, there's what we just saw on the screen and heard. There's this connection with Lord Brahma who received the entire, the original Mula Ramayana, etc., 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 and passed it on to Narada and revealed it in the heart of Valmiki. But that's Valmiki Ramayana. And then the other Ramayanas, let's say the version of Ramayana that Vyas it has nothing to do with Valmiki. Vyas is revealing the pastimes without the assist from Valmiki. But Vyas has his own realizations and his own access to Transcend, transcendental knowledge. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, my question is like uh, being a Gaudi Vaishnavas, uh, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all, they emphasize on Bhagavatam and also discussed Ramayana. You want to know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discussed Ramayana? That's true. That's your yes, question? Yes, Maharaj. He was certainly knowledgeable. I mean, he is the Supreme Lord, so what is it is that he doesn't know? But your question specifically was, did he study it? Yes, Maharaj. I'm pausing because I'm, I, you know, I can't remember reading anywhere. Did he study Srimad Bhagavatam? He certainly knew Srimad Bhagavatam, but did he study Srimad Bhagavatam? I don't recall reading anywhere that he studied Srimad Bhagavatam or that he studied Ramayana. He was a teacher of 
Vyakrana as a young Nimai, you know, scholarly young boy. Doesn't mean he doesn't know, but this, that doesn't answer the question. Did he study Ramayana? <laughs> I don't recall reading anywhere that he studied Ramayana or that he studied Srimad Bhagavatam or that he studied Mahabharata. I don't recall reading anywhere that he studied those things. He, the, presumably, he, he knew. Besides, you know, he's omniscient. But in terms of Leela, he certainly knew. Like he discussed with this Brahmana about this, all Sita was kidnapped. But then he got the scriptural verification. So, nice question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, it, like uh, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, um, the 18.66, uh, Sarva Dharma and yes. Yeah. Similarly, in Ramayana, can we consider the shloka reference which you referred as the ultimate uh, takeaway shloka? Padastuti, um, that one? The final shloka which you mentioned. When um, um, Lord Rama gives Sharanagati to Vibhishana, yes, that okay. shloka, yes. can we consider that as the... They call it, the, the commentators call it the Charama shloka. Charama shloka. Right? You've heard that term before? Yes. In, in yes, essence. Yes. Now, I'm going to do a little, between now and the Sunday program, I'm going to do a little homework. <laughs> but yes, there is such a verse. Now, which is the verse? What's the Sanskrit and the English translation of that verse? I'll, I'll bring it tomorrow. But, you know, there is, it, it, it expresses in a short essence the same principle of surrender as 1866. It's just the language is different, but the principle is the same. And the Ramayana is an exposition on that, the Charama Sloka. So, yes. Thank you. Now, which verse will be in suspense until tomorrow? <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Because I can't remember it. Thank you, Maharaj. Whoop, yes. She, she, she has a good voice. And I have a problem. He, I, you have people online, I understand. I, have, I, I can understand easier when you speak without the microphone. Thank you. Um, I have always had a difficulty understanding the difference between the real Sita and the face Sita. Okay. And also, was the real Sita aware of what was going to happen. And will you be expanding more on this theme? I know it's just kind of complicated because I haven't been able to grasp the whole. I understand your question. Has everyone heard the question? What's your answer? <coughs> Since it's not part of all the Ramayanas, there's not a lot that's written about it that I'm aware of. I can understand it in principle, but to give elaboration on it, I can't think of any commentary that has given elaboration on it. For me, that's, that's the resource that I draw upon is commentary. But Maya Sita means the real Sita was protected. Now, your question, did she know in advance that this, is, this bad thing is going to happen? That was, your, that was one of your questions. Yeah. But one of your questions. Reason, yeah. So, when it comes to Leela or pastimes, it's not that the person who is participating in the Leela knows in advance What's next? What's next? What's next? 
they're anticipating what's next because they know the script of the Leela. Rather, rather, they're inspired from within by Yoga Maya or the Lord's spiritual potency to perform their function that makes the Leela what the Leela is, successful and sweet and, you know, impart lessons and stimulate our love for them and for the personality of Godhead. So the answer to the, did she know, my understanding in, in general with Leela is they, she doesn't know. Here's a nice example. The, the, the nice example, one nice example is when the, the pastime of Krishna in Vrindavan manifesting himself as cowherd boys and calves when the ca cowherd boys and calves were in a cave. Correct? Balaram didn't know. Wait a minute. Balaram is omniscient. But Balaram was covered by Yoga Maya, so he just didn't recognize. Balaram was covered to be a participant in the Leela. And then towards the end of that one year, the curtain of Yoga Maya was drawn back and he started to put two and two together. Wait a minute. And then he saw things and recognized things. And then, you know, then everything became revealed. Like Krishna didn't say, shh, don't tell anybody. But, you know, the, the, the real cowherd boys were then released from the cave. And their mothers didn't know. Right? Because they had affection for Krishna like they had for Krishna. Only he was their son, but they had affection for their son like they have affection for Krishna. They were surprised. But anyway, it's yoga maya potency. That's my answer to your did Sita know question. It's yoga maya so she can be a participant in a pastime with the Supreme Lord where a false Sita is taken and she is in the custody of Agni according to this particular version of Ramayana. So she knew where she was, and she, she, there was feelings of separation from Ram, but she was being protected. So the, the false Sita was so that the grimy hand of Ravana couldn't touch the real Sita. So thus the false Sita. At least that's one of the explanations. So what's a false sita? It's it's a it's not the real thing. It's a reflection of the real thing. The the real thing is sita. So it's that's the explanation. It's it's similar to it's different from, but it's similar to the calves and the cowherd boys being kidnapped by Brahma, being put into a cave. The calves as well. Because their their spiritual their forms are spiritual. The calves, they're Krishna's paraphernalia. They're you know they're associates of Krishna. The coward boys, similar. Spiritual. The hacking to kidnap spiritual forms. Yoga Maya permitted it to happen. It's so that the pastime could be performed to fulfill the desire of the cows, to fulfill the desire of the mothers, to the, fulfill the desire of the cowherd men, to have Krishna as their son. Or the cows to have Krishna as their calf. He fulfilled their desire. It's mystical in one sense, but it, it's sensible in the other sense. Fulfilling desire, making arrangements so nobody gets confused. Including Balaram.
Looks like that's it. So, um, I, I came with some Mahaprasadam from Radha Damodar and from Radha Kalachanji, but it's in my suitcase. My suitcase isn't with me, it's in the, it was in the car, but you, you're going to bring my suitcase? No. So let's do this. You, you, whatever announcements you need to make, you make your announcements. Here's a nice microphone to make announcements. And I'm going to just excuse myself and find Mahaprasadam. I'll come back within you know, like a minute and a half. Don't go too far away. I need to give you Mahaprasadam. 